Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands. I'm Pete, and today we're going to be doing some body work. <laughs> Not this kind of body work. No, no, this is fine. This is good. <laughs> we're going to be working on. <laughs> we're going to be working on this poor fella. <laughs> the body on this thing's crispier than Freddy Krueger, <laughs> and holier than Swiss cheese on the Pope sandwich. This here is a 2007 Ram I bought off my buddy uh, Noel there. You know, he upgraded, bought a newer Dodge diesel, and I uh, figured, you know what? I'd take this one off his hands, you know? <laughs> I've been dodging this job for a little bit, but now I think it's time we ram it into the shop and put some more parts on it. <laughs> you might be asking why. Well, these things are worth some money, you know? You fix them up, these sell for lots of money. You know, this thing's in a world of hurt. The box is right roach, got a huge hole in it. You know, same with the doors and the uh, cab corners. You know, they're just down. Even the rocker panels, there's a window to your soul down in there. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to uh, replace all that stuff. You know, we're gonna cut out these rockers, weld in some new ones, cab corners. We're gonna have to strip the box off of there too, you know, get at it so we can do a proper job, you know, get her stitched in the backside too. You know, this thing's got 470,000 plus kilometers on it and she's still going strong. She works good, you know what? It's got the two inch lift, 35's on there. She's a three quarter ton, heavy hauler. And uh, I think it'd be perfect. It's uh, right up my alley. It's the kind of truck I've always wanted, always needed. So uh, yeah, it's time to get this thing up and going. Yeah, you know, this thing, it does have a lot of issues. It's gonna be like Frankenstein at the end of this. We gotta basically replace every single body panel. I got a set of front fenders, replacement doors, a box, tailgate, you know, everything. This thing doesn't even have a tailgate. Everybody knows how. A good tailgate for these is rarer than hen's teeth. So, uh, but my buddy uh, uh, Darren went out and picked up a tailgate for this one and for his. And then uh, I was lucky enough, uh, buddy, uh, Greg, the tow truck guy, he went out to, uh, I think it was Newcastle Iron Metal there, and picked a truck. He pulled all those panels off for him and his buddy Coop, so thanks, boys. <laughs> you know, like the box even has holes up at the top. And even the, you know, this thing needs everything. Even the tail lights, like, they're all busted and everything. And you can literally see these tail lights, yeah, they're screwed. Bulbs work, but they're screwed. Oh, I'm going to have to replace the grill, too. Darren, my buddy there, he's hooking me up with another one. He's got one that uh, doesn't look like a scrotum, so that's good. And, I mean, it still has the uh, fender flares on it, which is good because it helps hide the rust that all these Dodges get over the wheel wells. You know, I got a donor box starting to blister around the wheel well a little bit, but uh, those, where those flares are going to come in handy, we'll doctor her up with some grease and uh, whatnot, put those fender flares back on there, and no one will be the wiser. She's definitely seen better days. <laughs> I gotta give it to Noel. I like his ingenuity there. Uh, looks like a <laughs> gas tank strap let go quicker than a belt at the buffet line at the Mandarin there. And uh, he's got a ratchet strap on there holding the tank in. Thanks, fun. And I mean, it's got the four inch anaconda wrapping through the frame of this. You know, four inch exhaust. That's a nice one. That's, that's big, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, four inches is average size, isn't it? <laughs> But yeah, the cab corners and the rocker panels on this thing have left the chat a long time ago. Mother Nature is like, you know what, I want my truck back. So she's been taking her slowly but surely. One of the main reasons why I love this truck is it is a base model, man. Like roll-up windows, you know, manual locks. This thing, there's no, no electrical wires in here to go wrong. Everything in this rig is good old Manuel. You know, you got to do it yourself. <laughs> Even got the little stubby floor shifter. Huh, looks familiar. Is it cold outside? And I mean the best part of this rig right there. 5.9 Cummins, baby. Ha <laughs> ha, 325 horsepower, 610 foot-pounds of pulling power torque, baby. The main selling feature of this, no emissions crap on this. No EGR, no coolers, none of that stuff. Just full torque and power, baby. <laughs> There's a lot of sayings about these trucks, but the best one is, you know, Dodge makes her, but Cummins shakes her. So my plan is to uh, put some time, love, effort, blood, sweat, and tears into this thing, get her rigged up, and uh, make her my daily, because I need a good heavy truck, good heavy hauler, because Christina and I went out and we picked up that duker of a trailer, 28-foot camper trailer, take the family out camping and all that, and the old Silverada, you know, even though she's powered by real tornadoes, ain't got the jam to haul that thing. You know, the half-ton Chevy wood tow, that's got the 5.3 in her, you know, they do have a bit of jam and all that, but I mean, that trailer is freaking heavy. It's heavier than your mama. <laughs> you know what? You could put the things on the truck to make it work, you know, get a load leveling hitch and all that kind of jazz and whatnot. But I mean, you're pushing the limits, you know, a tranny ain't gonna like you, it ain't gonna be your friend, so you're just compensating, you know what? You just go out and be a man and, uh, hey, hey, get a Cummins, baby. Anybody that's got one knows these things will haul and you'll get like the same mileage whether she's loaded or not. 
So my plan is to turn this into my daily and basically kind of like, you know, the Redneck's Dirty Hands flagship. That's going to be my truck, you know. We're going to have this painted up and deckled, you know, Redneck's Dirty Hands. That'll be my heavy hauler. You know, I'm not knocking that Chevy. You know, it's a fantastic truck. It's 2017 5.3. You know, it's got all the bells and whistles, four-wheel drive. It's the only truck I've ever owned from brand new, but, you know... The real story about that truck is the only reason we bought it is because my late wife, she was diagnosed with leukemia, you know, six years ago, and uh, we thought we were going to need something to travel back and forth from here to Ottawa, which is, you know, like a four-hour drive, you know, something reliable, dependable in the wintertime, but unfortunately, the way things worked out, we ended up getting shipped out to Ottawa in an ambulance, never even drove the truck, you know, and the unfortunate situation is my wife didn't make it, you know, and... Uh, I got to stare at that truck every single day, and you know what? I've only got 65,000 kilometers on it. I don't drive it. I've always driven, you know, old junkers my whole life, you know. So it's time to move on. You know, we've got new things going on in my life. You know, we've got the YouTube channel going. We've got Christina now, you know, which I love. And life is about change, man. And uh, I think it's time to switch into this uh, heavy haul. Only like Joe Dirt says, <laughs> gotta keep on keeping on. Life's a garden. You gotta dig it. Like the Silverado's got 65,000 bombers on it, you know, it's F all <laughs> for our neighbors, you know, south of the border, below the belt there, you know, or as I call them, Southern Canadians, that's 40,000 miles, like, it's not even broken in yet, so might as well sell it while the market's hot, you know, I should be able to get a good dollar, probably almost what I paid for it, and put that money into the, the diesel, <laughs> you know, upgrades like bigger turbos and stuff like that, or, you know, putting a 12 valve Cummins into the Mrs. Jeep, <laughs> like, you know, we saw that last video there, that's Christina's new ride, and uh, we're going to do some upgrades to that. You know, if I'm going to have a Cummins in mine, might as well have a Cummins in her. That way we're Cummins together. Well, I mean, it's not like this is an episode of overhauling or Gas Monkey or anything like that. You know, I don't think I'm going to be able to get this whole truck done in one video. I mean, we might just get the rocker panels and cab corners done on this. I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. But uh, those TV shows, I don't got the production crew like they got. I work by myself, you know. Sometimes I'm lucky enough to have Christina here, you know. And uh, hopefully if y'all, you know get some more subscribers going and order some merch and all that stuff so we can make a little bit of extra moolah maybe i can talk my sweetheart christina into uh, helping me full time then she'll be in more videos too yeah the gas monkey garage or overhaul and build a truck in a freaking episode yeah that ain't reality man you know reality is i've been driving and building trucks for over 20 years you know uh doing my thing drinking beer and doing all this stuff i even got a picture hanging up in here there's 20 years ago plus Who's that good looking fella with that three quarter ton heavy shabby bait? Well, GMC actually. Flying the Canadian flags. That's me. Yeah, drinking a beer. Oh, well, it's the life I've lived my whole life. So uh, I think it's time to get back to that. Let's rebuild an old junker. Make her something new. Awesome. Reliable. Dependable. Hopefully. Dodges. Are they dependable? I don't know. Maybe. So I say we pull this rig in the shop and uh, get going. And. <laughs> Yours must be burned. I think somebody placed an order because Christina just called me and she's going to be coming by bringing me a coffee, so she might make an appearance in this video. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, we got her pulled in the shop there. You might hear some backup beepers and some noise in the background. Fellas are out there repaving the road there. <laughs> going to give us a new canvas. We can lay some strips. Last weekend at the local car show, my Fargo parked in there, laid an epic burnout down the road. I'll put a picture in there. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy Leon took this photo of the strips I left out in front of the local car show in our town there, which is a great turnout. It's like, a, I don't know, th over 300 cars there, but none of them in their big dollar cars were willing to leave any marks on the road. So I was getting a little bit fed up, wanted to put on a show. So, uh, yeah, I let her rip and <laughs> that there doesn't do it justice. You know, that was pretty close to a thousand feet of rubber. I think I left there. So uh, nice one. But yeah, we got to get going on this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off these fender flares so we can save them, reuse them. And then uh, we'll get the box uh, unbolted, uh, get it off of there, undo the fuel neck, filler, all that stuff. Uh, get these front fenders off. And that way it'll give us straight access to the whole rocker panel there. These doors are super simple to peel off. All you got to do is pop this accordion thing out of here anyway, you pop that off there's a plug in there you unplug it you got bolt 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 door comes off so we'll strip all four doors off that way we can get at these rockers you know they're pretty roached halfway back the front's not too too bad but i mean we got full replacement rockers so we'll work with what we got 
But yeah, we'll get this thing uh, all unbolted. Maybe go over Boro uh, McLean's key tractor. We'll string, a, I don't know, a couple of ratchet straps or a chain in there. Lift that sucker off. That way I can clean up the frame a little bit. Get at that uh, gas tank strap up under there while it's all off and everything. And then uh, I can pressure wash the frame. And then we got access to do the cab corners because you got to get in behind here, weld them in and all that stuff too. So uh, we want to do a nice job. All right, so it's time pitter patter get at her, and I did, you know, put the out there uh, in the universe that we want Christina here more often, and uh, <laughs> there's my CD. So I'm gonna get to uh, work on this, and she's gonna be the camera girl. So uh, remember, you guys want to see more of her? Buy some stuff, more subscribers, then <laughs> my sweetheart will be working with me all the time. Please. <laughs> So, first things first, we're going to pull all these flares off, kick them aside. It's all been just got some like self-tap or some Phillips head screws holding it in and then some 5 sixteenths uh, headed ones. So, I just got my little 3 8 little stubby ratchet handle thing. Works good for tight access areas like that. Beauty. Little trim screws out and then it's got these little tiny spring clips clipped on here just gotta pop them off there's that one handy dandy swiss army pocket knife just like so and then this just dangling there <laughs> oh somebody's oh it's got the rubber thing somebody's siliconed it onto the truck there oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. It's nice and healthy. <laughs> That's a nice one. <laughs> That's why we're replacing the box. <laughs> All right, well, we'll uh, carry on and get the other ones off. Okay, this is the last one. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Dodges are so bad on the wheel wells. They got this foam stuff in here that holds all the moisture and it just rots these things out. So, like I said, the donor box that I got is nowhere near this bad. It does have a little bit of blistering, but it's down in here. And I'm hoping these players are going to cover that and we'll live, <laughs> we'll live our lives. We'll carry on like everything's normal under there. So, players are off. We got to undo this uh, filler neck. So we can uh, disconnect that from the box and then we'll get this box unbolted. See if we can get her out of here. Just has three little Torx bolts holding this on. These two came out no problem, but this one has all the rust and everything that's on here. Being a bit of a bear, but it's coming, it's coming. Like there's one in perfect shape. All that, it came out no problem. And then look at that, like just rotted, almost down to nothing. Like <laughs> that's Ontario for you. Hmm. That there is dangling in the breeze, so, uh, yeah, one step closer. Might as well pull the tail lights out now when we're at it. They're held in, or at least this one's held in with a couple little Torx screws that go in on this side here. Hmm. It just falls right out of there. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we got to change those two. <laughs> so then we come over to this side, and uh, yeah, there is uh, no screws in here holding it in, but somehow magically this tail light's being held in place. Noel, how'd you do that? Oh, yeah, carpenter. There's <laughs> the screws <laughs> jammed in there. Like, that's a little Robertson. Like, I'm a mechanic, I don't even have screwdrivers for that. Uh -oh. <laughs> Carpenters. <laughs> Hmm. So when they make jokes, they uh, about going, I guess there is such a thing as blinker fluid. <laughs> <laughs> like he had a couple of these other little flathead screws in there, and then I had to go raid my kid's toolkit. <laughs> Look at this, this is a bit of a joke of a screwdriver here, but it fits. These tail lights are junk, and normally I wouldn't even care. Just you know, send this thing to the scrap with it in it. But I got to pull the wiring harness out of here, so that's 
what I'm trying to take and be able to salvage this section here. We gotta get this headache rack off so it's a little bit easier to manage taking it off and we don't mess up and take out the back window. That's what we're doing. We don't need to add to our hard slits, right? No. <laughs> Got the two loose bolts that were in there undone and yeah, that was all that was holding this thing on there. So I'm just gonna slide this sucker that away. Right at the front corner here, there is a ground strap that goes from the box to the back of the cab. So, it's a 10 mil bolt on there. We'll peel that sucker off. It's always those things like that you forget about. And then you start lifting the box, and it's like, something's still hanging on. It could be this. Let's try those. It should taste, <laughs> taste delicious. <laughs> All right, we're under this crispy critter, and right up there is one of the box bolts. It's an 18 mil head, but I'm a little skeptical whether it's gonna come out because <laughs> there's what used to be left of that box rail. So we might have a fight on our hands here, but we'll get at it. I got an 18 mil on long extension. We'll go up through this hole in the frame, get up there on that fella, and hopefully she comes undone. I cannot believe that that came out. There is zero threads <laughs> up in there anymore. <laughs> You're getting rained on. You gotta turn the hat back around. <laughs> <laughs> Quite fun. Trucks get lighter and lighter though. It didn't say no though, it only said pardon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm too clean. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell where I was laying on the creeper. <laughs> it's all in my ears. Ew. Buddy, Chris showed up just in time. We do have some heavy lifting going, but we're gonna set up the cherry pecker to hopefully help get this thing <laughs> off of here with it. We'll set this up probably halfway-ish. Pick it up a little more on the front, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Seems <laughs> legit. <laughs> in there and uh... <laughs> <laughs> there's a limbo under it <laughs> limbo yeah hmm. came over just to get a new hat and put him right to work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Those front box bolts came undone and like that's the bottom of the box. <laughs> like I can't believe that. Holy geez, we're gonna have to give this a good uh, good cleaning. Wow. And now's a good time to uh, <laughs> replace this gas tank strap although this one's rated for a thousand pounds so i don't think the tank weighs that much <laughs> oh yeah cherry pecker work meant for this and uh, thanks to chris for helping out uh, <laughs> it's always good to have extra hand and that is one rough looking box but i'm interested in a different box <laughs> different box
The beer box! <laughs> it's gotta be break time after that. I need to wash down some of that rust. That just right. <laughs> uh, cheers. Now that we got the, <laughs> the back end's bare, nothing on there. We gotta get these two front fenders off too, so we get good access to the front of the rocker panel. So we gotta peel the headlights out, uh, I think. I don't think these fenders are too bad to get off, but uh, we're gonna find out. We'll start with the headlights and go from there. Handy dandy magnet tray. Plug on the inner wheel well. Gotta pull out. Right, there's a 10 mil bag in this way somewhere. <laughs> oh no. It's donkey kick it out. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Came right out of the freaking headlight. That's supposed to stay in there. And the nut's supposed to come off the other side there. So we're in for a treat with all this stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna pull the inner fender well out, which is just a bunch of 5 sixteenths headed uh, little screws. I think that's the right one. Oh, you a tetanus shot. It's a little crusty. <laughs> There's two 10 mils down in here that I can't get at with the zip gun, so I'll just grab a wrench at wrench. I grabbed the one fucking wrench I got that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, let's close two. So the antenna runs through here and in behind here. So we got to find that and unhook it. Might have to pull this trim panel out. I'm not sure. Not getting my butt crack, are you? <laughs> I'm covering it up. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure you're the only one that wants to see that, honey. <laughs> Oh, you never know nowadays. Ah, <laughs> oh, see, and there you go. Inside here, underneath this foam, is your connector. Pull that out. Pull that little grommet out. There's your antenna. And Bob's your uncle. Or George. <laughs> and then we should be clear. Something is still dangling. Dangling in here. Oh, that thing right there. One of them little Christmas tree things. Oh, okay. This is what we want though. So now we just gotta do the same thing to the other side. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just pull it out. We'll wash what we can. Front and back, then we'll bring her back in, peel the doors off, disconnect the battery, and we'll go to town on the rockers and cab corners. 
Sounds like fun. Oh, <laughs> I can feel, I can think of a few things that are way more fun. Right. <laughs> better love. Looking pretty good, eh? Not too bad, not too bad. Maybe I'll keep you around. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fenders are off, but easy access to these uh, plugs. We got the batteries disconnected, so we'll pull the doors off. These can be such a pain in the butt sometimes. Oh, there's one. Oh, there we go. <laughs> then you can see the connector there. That's the beauty thing about these ones, because it's all manual, you know, the windows and the locks. <laughs> Four wires going into this door. So uh, pretty simple, straightforward. We just got to unhook all of them. And then uh, my sweetheart, Christina. <laughs> uh, I'll hold the doors. You want to do the, you twist the nuts. Twist the nuts. Twist the nuts. I can do that. Are you ready, honey bunny? <laughs> so on the driver's side, what we're going to try first is I got the the bulk uh, head connector already done. The door's locked shut. Um, it's only got the four bolts bolting it on, so while it's still closed, I'll pull these suckers off. So now, there's nothing holding this on, mm. except for the door latch. Oh God. <laughs> and we just have those studs are, there's two studs coming through the hinges, so it won't fall right off as long as I keep pressure on the door forward. So, let's, uh, <laughs> let's have a hernia, eh? <laughs> I hear they're fun. Oh, yeah. You ready, baby? <laughs> oh, my God. Just like so. That's how you take a Dodge door off all by yourself. <laughs> Worked good for the front one. This one looks a lot lighter, so. You can do it. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Come on, you. Mm. Yeah, good boot. This door is way lighter. <laughs> now we have total access to the rocker panels that we got to replace. And the cap corners, we can get around the back, so we can cut all this stuff out, weld those new full panels in that we got, which I haven't shown you yet, but I got full panels. There's the new cap corner. You know, we don't have to really use all of it. They give you enough to go up above the body line in there. I think we really only need to go in down here. I kind of like usually doing it on this line because it's on a, on a curve there, so when you put your weld and all that, you can grind it and smooth it in. Less bondo. <laughs> My back hurts. No, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> All the doors are off and on the ground. You should leave the doors off, and then you can say it's it's a jeep. That's actually it's actually not a bad idea. <laughs> It'll be less work. I do have a jeep. Uh, I got the letters in my toolbox I got off an old Jeep. We can put it on the grill. <laughs> it, it identifies as a Jeep, officer. <laughs> it's fine, yes. <laughs> well, teamwork makes the dream work. Christina giving me a hand. We got parts of this Dodge laying everywhere. And look, look at how rough 
this box was like that was the main support rail there and uh, she gone so you know might re reuse that bed liner there maybe the back rack but this uh this dodge here it's uh pretty stripped down naked it's like a like a woman after she takes her makeup off you know it uh, <laughs> looks a little rough definitely doesn't look as good as it did last night but uh, we're gonna make her look a little bit better here now and with the doors off, I got the uh, sill plates all pulled up and everything. Uh, now we got full access to the whole complete rocker. And honestly, the front section of this rocker ain't too bad. You know, I did pick up these full rockers there from Napa. You know, from here back is Roach. She's gone and looks like we got a little bit, got a little bit of a hole there. You know, easy way of telling, you take one of these little awls or whatever, a little spike bit, and you can just... If you can poke it through, yeah, there's uh, no good. So we're going to have to get up into here with that one to repair it. The new rocker kind of comes up here and trails off right in between this rusty stuff. And yeah, that's no good. So we're going to have to end up making a patch panel that's going to come from down here and come down into this area to connect to that rocker. The new cab corner comes all the way up to here. We'll probably, I'll probably steam it here. I like to do it all on the... Uh, the body line there it's got a curve in it adds strength and it's easy to grind on that surface same with the rockers <laughs> yeah she's no good there but uh, once you get going up here it's good and solid so i don't really think there's any point in me taking it all the way and when you do that i mean you got to deal with all these curves up in here you know you got to lay it all in and then you're going to be trying to weld and get all these curves lined up so this way We'll be welding here. You know, we're not taking this thing to Barrett Jackson's. We just want to be able to drive down the road without the MTO or whatever, but saying, hey, you got rusty rockers, here's your ticket. You know, no, we'll, we'll have solid rockers on there. And then same thing with the cab corner. I'm going to probably put my patch panel in here and go straight across this way. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down here, get rid of the old panel. I'm going to leave this section because this is where it's all spot welded. I mean, they give you that whole section there but i mean this is still solid that's surface rust and all that i can grind that all out of there and then i can weld it right in this because there's a ledge there i can grind this all up i'll weld it in there and then i'll come here stitch weld it across around in here it'll be man trust me and probably zero bondo in there and i mean they wonder why these things rot out like look at that oh that's a mouse nest up in there Ugh. <laughs> this is just full of foam like that is one solid chunk. All right, so I'm gonna prep this rocker panel to go on. Now it does have a factory uh, hole down here with a nut welded in it for where the fender bolt goes in. We don't need it on this side because this side's still good. So we're gonna 86 that section right where it starts to curve down out of the door jam. I'm just gonna cut it right off there because if we don't really need this section. I'm just gonna lay it on over top and then I'm gonna cut it down here so it just kind of becomes a slip fit over top of there. And uh, yeah, a lot of guys, there's different ways you can cut it. You can get a right angle with a cut up, a zip blade or whatever. I really like these uh, air body saws with the little sawzall blades. They're pretty good. They go through the metal grate and you can keep a fairly straight line with it or you can go around corners and stuff. The only problem with it is it is louder than an angry woman. So you definitely need to wear a pair of these in here. If, if your wife's nagging on you, this is the best job to do because you cannot hear anything when you do it. Watch this. And I mean, with that end cut off there, you can see how good this fits already. Geez, I might have to rethink what I'm gonna do here. I might just pinch weld around, slip that on, just weld it right on over top because uh, it's fitting pretty good. I don't know if the doors would close with the extra thickness of this, but uh, I'm thinking about it. The cab corner here, I cut the top section off and then that flange off of there, hold it up, and then I describe my line where that's gonna be. I'll cut the old cab corner section out. We'll get rid of this junk, I'll cut her down here. And we'll uh, fit this guy in. We'll get that blended in so she looks minty. So long, sucker.
So I've changed it up a little bit. I decided instead of cutting along that edge, I'm gonna use the whole rocker up into the sill plate here. So I basically just cut the old rocker straight down and now I've got it slid over top of the original butted up here. I drilled some holes for some plug welds and then uh, I've got this pretty nice and smooth. It'll be good to even out. And I got her clamped to the pinch weld under there. I'll fill those ones with some plug welds. This one, I'm just going to layer on top and I'll stitch weld it on here. I'll put some seam sealer uh, on that. I'm not too concerned about it. Like I said, it's not a show truck. You know, obviously, if you're building something, restoring a car, whatever, you'd want to butt weld that. Same thing as that. But, I mean, I'm not. <laughs> we're not getting too fancy here. Same thing. Pop some holes in there. Got that crimped up. Fits perfect. It's nice and tight. I'm sure the doors will clear. I'll stitch weld it here. I'll have to make up a panel because the rot goes up higher than what these are. And then I've got the cab corners cut and fit. So I'll start working them around. I'll get it out in the middle. So we want to, I want to work this as smooth and flat so I can get the angle here and here. So this is good. I want to try and do this without too much bond or anything like that. The back here, nobody will ever see it anyway, but we'll get it fitting good anyway. You know, I ain't saying that this is the right way of doing it. You know, I'm sure all you body shop guys will be like, that's not how you do it, but uh, that's how I'm gonna do it. All right, so it's all mocked up in place. I got a clamp there. This is a beautiful joint right now, so I'm gonna just tack this thing all together so I can pull all the uh, vice grips off. So I've got my uh, welder set. I'm using, I got 035 wire in here, which is pretty heavy for body work, you know. Usually you'd wanna be using, I think it's the 023 or 025, but, uh, you know, this is, I use the 035 for everything, so you just gotta be careful with it. You know, sometimes it will blow through, but uh, we'll get her tacked up anyway. tacked in and I'm just trying to fit the cab corner in here and I mean nothing's exactly the same with these aftermarket panels but I'm getting I want to get this line here perfect I'll start from that and then I'll work the panel around so you gotta kind of just massage it in and around until we get it where we want I've got the welder turned down almost not quite as low as I can go but close to it and then we're just gonna flex this in until I get this where I want it and then I'll hit that with a little bit of a tack and just make sure it's staying level and true That's where a little pick comes in handy. You can get it in there and you can pry it and work the panel around. And we just keep working it around the corner here. Let's see how smooth we can get this transition. The angle's a little bit off. The bend on this thing, so sometimes what I do is get in there with a screwdriver and just kind of work it around, stretch the donor panel out a bit. Not bad. We're getting there. Little by little, we're getting there. Just gotta keep finding the butter zone where she's all good. Alright, so I've got it all tacked in here, and this is gonna end up being nice and flush. And you just keep spacing your tacks out a little bit, you know, quarter inch, half inch, or whatever, and then you just keep going in between. And then once they get close, grind them, and then just keep filling in the gap. And I've got the uh, 
the cab corner and the rocker kind of joined in there. And then this transition here, I think this is going to turn out pretty mint because it's a nice smooth transition. I'll uh, keep hitting it with the tacks and grinding it, but it should blend together. Beauty. And same thing, it wraps around, you know. Sometimes when you're fitting it, the gap will get a little bit tight. You just stick that body saw in there and then just run it through and then you get your back gap back and then you can set it and then tack her down. So it'll be all welded down the back, across here, around there, all smoothed out. New cab corner and rocker. Nice one. I'm just gonna carry on uh, welding this up, grinding it, and then do the exact same thing to the other side and then probably have a beer. <laughs> That's all to it, man. I got the... Uh, the weather strip back in there and everything's all clipped in it's all smoothed out so all i got to do is basically just hit that with a little skim of some cheese on there a little bit of spot putty whatever and uh, you know tickety boo that i could feather out or whatever with some putty or even just put some seam sealer on there whatever and then uh, you know i had to make a little little patch because the hole went up higher so i cut this scabbed in there you know same thing i can transition that with a little bit of cheese to smooth her out and then uh, you know what <laughs> I don't even really have to put anything on there. Some primer and some gravel guard probably be good, but uh, yeah, there you have it. Cab corner, rocker panel installed, done. Nice one. <laughs> I gotta say, this is quite a job, you know. Blew this whole truck apart, fender's gone, door's gone, box gone, you know, and welded in some, uh, well, one side rocker cab corner. So that's a good day, you know what I mean? Ah, well deserved beer break. Holy moly. I don't know uh, how long this video is going to be. I maybe just ended here, you know. This is going to be a bit of a build process, you know. I still got to do the rocker and the cab corner on the other side. I got to swap the donor doors to this one. But the donor doors, they're... Uh, donor doors, say that ten times fast. <laughs> they're all power windows and everything, whereas these ones are all the manual ones. So I'm going to have to switch all the guts because I'm going to keep this all manual crank and locks and all that because I like the simplicity of it. Uh, so there's gonna be that and then I gotta paint this thing and uh, letter it up, you know, uh, red next dirty hand style, so We might have to call it quits here, you know, uh, hope you enjoyed the video <laughs> A lot of work. Cheers But I mean as always thanks for tuning in I <laughs> we enjoy making these videos I hope you enjoyed, you know learned a little bit of something, you know I, I'm not a body man, you know, and I don't claim to be I'm sure I might get some flack for just slipping them on there and welding over top, but I mean, hey, not every car's a show car, man, so uh, this is just a truck. It's going to be a work truck. I ain't going to Bear Jackson's or nothing. I ain't going to sell it for millions of dollars, but, uh, you know, I'd, it'll do fine for me, and as long as the door's shut, which I'm I'm hoping they will, but, uh, you know, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this, and we really appreciate all the views and subscribers and all that stuff, and everybody checking out the website, www.rednecks-dirtyhands.com, you know, checking out the merch stickers and some hats and all that jazz, and, uh, you know, we really appreciate it. Uh, as always, cheers, take her easy. <laughs>